Hi everyone, it's Paris here. How is everyone? Now I'm just having my cup of tea, my herbal tea, my um, oolong tea with my lemongrass and it is a little cool and I shouldn't have it very cool but it is. So good morning to everyone. Hope you're all well. Join me with your cup of herbal tea. You know, oh, excuse me one moment friends. Korea's here. Sorry about that friends, I had the courier at the door, it doesn't stop here, it's not constant, non-stop. Now friends, good morning to everyone, hope you're having a fabulous Tuesday. And a lot of you are probably saying, oh Paris, it's a shit Tuesday, especially in Melbourne or in Australia. Well, it depends how you see it, you see as my heading says, you manifest your thoughts and your behaviours. So life has always been shit, life has always been topsy-turvy all over the place. But if you want to focus on the things that make your life shit, well, then you're going to keep manifesting that, right? I'm not saying that you don't think about negative things in your life and how to deal with them, but you're not thinking of that, you see. What's happening is most people in their mind are, 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 are focusing and thinking about a negative topic over and over and over again before you go to sleep, when you wake up, during the day and all that, and you're not finding any solutions for it. Why? One, because you don't care to find a solution because you don't want to do it, you want someone else to find the solution. Two, you're too lazy to find the solution. Three, you don't know how to reach a solution, right? And four, you can't be stuffed. So you've got to choose one of these, right? You got to, it's, it's, it's one of those. Or you go for the other option is that you sit and you think hard about what your problem is in life, whatever it is, you say, okay, how can I deal with this? How can I hire or ask my friends who have been through this similar experience what solution to find? Or you can say, um, how can I hire people who have had these experiences? For instance, you're going through a divorce, you want to you, you want to speak with people who have been through a divorce and get advice from them. How do I deal with it? What do I do? You know, to better your life, to have less complications. Isn't life about having less complications? Because life is not about having zero complications. No, friends, you've come to the wrong planet for that. You're meant to go to other planets for this. And there are other planets, we know that now, right? We all know that, so we don't have to hide it. 2021, we can all say there's other planets. So I'm just having a friendly chat here with you guys. How can we have less complications in our life? So what you do is you write down all the topics that are pissing you off. And you know, friends, that I talk raw, you know that I say it as it is, because this is not a formal consultation. <laughs> okay, this is a general friendly chat and I'm going to write down for instance a couple of, of topics might have some complications health finance relationships so many could be building a house and you got issues with the builders right building or you might have with your pets might have issues right so write down your list now if you don't want to write down your list then you're not going to solve your complications it's that simple because friends and I really should have my whiteboard behind me but I forgot to bring it right so, I'm going to be jumping backwards and forwards on topics because today is about manifestations. So, how do you manifest something? You're going to say, Paris, how do I manifest something? Well, you write down your issues, like I said, and then you write down the possible solutions. So, for instance, oh, and I forgot to add work, right? Work and businesses because a lot of people are self-employed or part of companies and businesses. So, that's pets and that's work and there's businesses. There's so many issues. Friends, friendships, right? So, so you write down your list here. It's back to front. Now you can see it. Is it back to front or you can see it? I think you can see it. So next to work and, and business, you might have issues with that, you know, whether you want to go ahead with what your employer is asking of you and doesn't. And if you don't agree with what your business people are saying, like I know people have been in business and they've walked away from the business and set up, they've broken up the business in half or whatever, a third or however many partners there are, and they've gone and started their own business. That's okay. These things happen in life, friends. We don't have to be going through this shit in 2021 to be able to, 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 to say, oh, it's any different. You do it the same way. 
do exactly the same way, same with work. If, if you've been bullied in the workplace, what do you do? You piss off and you leave and you find something else. I've been through it. I was in my dream careers in business development, in the acting, in the film industry, especially in business development. I got bullied and shit, so I just fucked off and I left. Simple, friends, simple. Just move on, change. Or find another position somewhere else. Right? Or learn how to deal with the bullies, which I'm going to tell you now, friends. When you're dealing with bullies, there's no other option than just to leave the situation. And that means whether it's a partner who's a bully, whether your family members who are bullies, your siblings, your parents, it doesn't matter who it is, friends. You cannot change bullies because that is their character. They are born that way. See, we are born this way. We are born. You don't become a bully. You are born a bully. That's how you become. And then your parents spoil you even more. And that's why those who are teenagers in the 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s are sport brats. Because our parents have spoiled the F out of us. And we've all become bullies. Not all of us, sorry. But those of us who are predisposed to being bitches and bullies, even more so. So this is what we're dealing with in life at the moment. And you see, what used to happen, friends, is that women used to shut up for decades and decades. Not centuries, because women used to control the world thousands of years ago. They still do, but they're behind the scenes now. Now they're in the ears of the psychopaths. So what happens is all these men who are in senior positions all over the world in companies, whatever, 99.99999% of them have got bimbos in their ears telling them what to do and how to um, control the workplaces, laws to implement, how to run businesses, relationships, everything. It's the women. The women have always been in charge of this planet. I'll speak for this planet. I'm not speaking in front of the planets. That's for another topic. So I'm getting to the manifesting. So when these people in the ears of these narcissists and psychopaths and they do whatever they want, because, you know, there's a sexual exchange and all that. Friends, I'm saying it as it is. It's raw, right? I don't talk from textbooks. I actually speak raw from experience in life, how life really is. So the men get their sex from the women. The women get their way with the advice that they want to give to the men and the suggestions for the business or whatever, whatever. And so the women are implementing, these psychopath women are implementing what they want. And when I hear that women have no rights, I'm thinking, on which planet? Women have always had rights. Look at the, the queens of female, senior business women, senior business people are women. Women are in charge of a lot of organisations. My goodness, in Victoria, they've even put a female now, the ex-bimbo from Australia Post, in charge to take over um, uh, uh, McGill's position. So don't tell me that women don't have um, equal opportunity. There's plenty of equal opportunity. But you see, these women in senior positions don't want women like you, you and me in senior positions because we will out them, right, for being selfish, greedy, and narcissists. Another topic. So if you want to manifest something, you say it and you do it. You say it to yourself and you do it. You talk to your angels. I keep telling you every day, friends, talk to your angels, ask your angels what you want. Whatever I ask for, I get. Can I make that clearer? Whatever I ask for, I get. Now, I don't know if I can see any comments here or anything, whatever. I can't see anything here. Right? I can't see anything here. If there's any comments, select now from the audience. Right? Okay. Because this is a new setup here, so I can't see. All right. Now, so manifesting something is not just saying, oh, I wish I had that, or I wish I did this, I wish, I wish, I wish. It's not just wishing. It's you're thinking of what you want. So let's say you want a new job. What's happening at the moment? A lot of you are leaving your jobs. So you want to find another job, obviously, because you want to survive. Unless you have savings and you don't care to work. That's your business, your prerogative. Right? Well, you've got to write down the plans of where you're going to look, who you're going to ask, what you're going to do. You may have to change your skills. You may have to change your location. It may not be the, the job that you've always loved to do because let's face it, friends. Um... Generally, the middle class do not have jobs that they really want to do. It's We accept those jobs because we are familiar with those jobs. We're comfortable with those jobs. They pay the bills. Ah, and so we just deal with that situation. Because if you had a magic wand, where's my magic wand, my magic selenite wand, and you ask yourself, what is it I really want to do in life and what is it that I really want to pursue? Well, first of all, I'd say to you, friends, have you consulted with your astrological chart? If you say no, well then how are you going to know your strengths and your weaknesses? So you consult with your astrological chart, just like all the elected. 
and they know what their strengths and weaknesses are so they hire people to they delegate people to fulfill their weaknesses to do the jobs of their weakness weakness skill set and they focus on their strengths but if you don't know your strengths and your weaknesses then how are you going to achieve what you want so you're still stuck in square one now friends i'll be talking about a lot of things while i've got my cup of tea here now some of you know that i do quite a few things and I know there's a lot of you out there that can't stand my bullshit with. I'm not, I haven't got a gun to your head to listen to me. Now, friends, like you know, I'm a professional, experienced, holistic counsellor. What that means is I look at your body, mind, soul, spirit, the whole thing, everything around you. Your lifestyle, your relationships, I look at everything, right? So when you come to me with a problem, I'll tell you how to solve it from a holistic, big, big picture. I was born that way, friends, big picture. I'm a clairvoyant. I know exactly what's going on, what's going to happen, why it's happening, right? I'm a medium, which means that I could connect with people or animals who have passed over, crossed over. I could connect you with them. I'm a wife. I'm a housekeeper. I'm a house cleaner. I'm a cook. I wash. I dry. And I do everything else that most of you do. And a lot of you who don't is because you can you can either afford or find the pe people to do this work for you. You're very, very lucky. And I look after a lot of parent children. I've had stepchildren in my life, right, that were more proactive with me then than what they are now. That's okay. Everyone's got their life to get on with their life. And I have a lot of parent children. I rescue parrots. I know that I do a lot of things. I used to do filmmaking and whatever, but I'm just telling you now what I'm doing. So, but. There are different types of healers, different types of clairvoyants, different types of psychics, clairvoyants, a similar thing, right? Different types. I am a, my main strength is a healer because just like you might, um, you know, be a, a housewife and you look after your children, but you'll find that you've got strengths. You might prefer ironing over washing or whatever. So you've got your strengths because you do ironing better than what you do washing everyone in their job has got their strengths and their weaknesses everyone no one is a hundred percent perfect in what they do and this is why companies and even sole businesses employ people to do the jobs that either they don't have time to do or that they don't know how to do perfect and this there's also a lot of couples you'll find that women generally are more predisposed in the brain to do administration organized and all that generally right it's women so you'll find a lot of men could be the you know builders carpenters mechanics or or you know sort of the front of a business and then you've got the women in the background doing a lot of the organization and the paperwork and admin that's very very common and that is smart if there are couples out there who can work like that together and i know a lot of couples who are like that and they have achieved a lot of financial success because they're not competing with one another and they're not whinging. You haven't got one whinging, taking the other one down. Because what happens in a relationship is if you have someone who's got this ego or arrogance against someone, in, you know, against the wife or husband, this sets the other person back too. So both of you get set back. Both of you get set back. But if you guys both get along, you can both create a project or a business to succeed together. I mean, I mean, Philip and I could not work together. Could not work together because Philip knows everything and I'm just a young bimbo and I don't know anything. So we could not work together. So he goes his way and I'll go my way. And I've always wanted to be able to work with someone to achieve something because I know what to do and how to achieve things. Never mind, that's another topic. I'm just trying to give you an idea that if couples can work together like that, you can manifest what you want. Right. So my main strength as a healer is a systemized healer. And the word system comes from that, right? And I'll tell you what that is. Systemized healer. I am strategic in my nature and I am able to take in the whole picture. The whole picture, friends. So when things were happening last year, right, in Victoria or Australia with all these fake freedom groups, in order for me to get to the conclusion that they are all fake, what I did was is that I did my research. I liaised with most groups. I did my research because I like big picture things. 
if I don't experience something myself and if I don't see it myself, I'm not going to take it on board, right? So I need to take big picture. I can deal with details, but also big picture with both. I have visions and I'm visionary and holistic in my thinking, right? I have been told that I'm rational and able to see things in a linear, cle cleanly and clearly. That's the thing about me, friends, as a healer is when you come to me and you say, Paris, I've got this problem, I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm going to give it to you raw. I'm going to say exactly, not just how I see it, but from my professional and personal experience, I'm going to say the best way for you to get through this obstacle and this problem is to do that step, that, that, that and that. I'm a steps person. I'm a bullet points person. If you've sent me emails and I reply back, you know, for whatever, I'm a bullet points person. They say it's a masculine thing. Well, maybe I'm a bit more masculine than what I thought. <laughs> okay, now, I love to research. And a lot of you, a lot of people didn't like that about me the past year and this year. It's because I do so much research and I post a lot of things. And a lot of you very naively and stupidly say to me, because you've got the naive people, you've got stupid, right? So, oh, Paris, but how do you know that? Well, oh, I've researched it. And I'm surprised. And just you asking me that, that shows me how naive and suckers most people, if not 99 point, I'd say, 99% of people have followed all these freedom groups and individuals because you just go blindly following people. You haven't done any research. You haven't done any, you, you don't know what's going on. You're just following anyone that's just saying whatever you want to hear. I can see, not just with my eyes, but clairvoyantly, I can see the possible outcomes and the possible influences as a whole. For instance, like people ask me, a lot of people ask me all the time, so what's going to happen in the future? Right? So I can see the possible outcomes and possible influences. So what's going to happen in the future? Well, what are the possible outcomes of our future and what are the possible influences? If we don't implement positive influences onto this earth, how are we going to get possible outcomes? Because at the moment, friends, everything that's happening out there is all negative. And those of you who can't see it, go back and sleep under a rock. Right, because there's a lot of people out there who are seeing positive outcomes because they're implementing positive inputs. They're putting positive in their life. They're focusing on themselves. They're focusing on their homes, their businesses, their life that they want to do. But a lot of a lot of you are, are still watching and following all this negative shit online. I'm not saying a lot of it isn't true, but a lot of it has been intentionally produced. Videos have been produced to put so much fear into your auras and into your lives that you wake up every day and throughout the day you can't think of anything else other than the world's going to end because you're watching all this shit and so let me ask you all these things that a lot of you have have watched online and all that what how has it impacted your life in a better way what has it done a lot of you, yes, some of you, it's helped you because you've been able to plan and you've said, okay, I'm going to go plan. I'm going to go buy, you know, more foods or I'm going to learn more skills so I can work in that area or I'm going to tidy things up in my life so I can be more organized, blah, blah, blah. But most of you are just going blindly. A lot of those of you who have been calling other people sheep and asleep, I'm, not, I'm sorry to say, I'm not even apologizing, you are the sleepy ones because if you're calling other people sheep and sleepy, you don't know what's going on out there. Because if you really did, you wouldn't be calling people that. Because a lot of you who, who call people that, look at where we are now, October 2021. It is exactly as I said where it would be. It's exactly as the leads planned it would be. It's exactly where it is. Why? Why? I tell you why, friends. I tell you why we are where we are now. And this is all about manifestations, right? I'll tell you why. I'll get to what kind of healer I am because a lot of you want to know. Right. So I'm going to draw something now here. See that? The elite in us. Can you see that? Right? Can you see that? So. The elite. See all these lines here? They're not timelines. They delegate to everyone. So let's say we've got Australia, we've got China, we've got Europe, 
Africa, right? The elite delegate. The leader delegating. And the only way to get anything done in life is to delegate. Example, ladies, generally in Australia, a most misogynist and sexist country. We're here in Australia, friends, women, expected to cook, clean, fuck, tidy up, be a, a, a partner's um, um, counsellor. We're expected to do everything, look after the kids and, and whatever, and et cetera, et cetera. Right. So how do women do that in Australia? We delegate. We tell the kids, clean your rooms. We tell the husbands, you got to do that. you got an appointment with the doctor. you got this and that. We delegate. Delegating. Tell the husband, go and get this from the shops or, or we tell our, our teenage kids, go shopping and go and get this. We delegate, delegate, delegate. Well, that's how it's got to be done. Right. And then you got us. The opposite of a lead on the other side. What's happening? What are you going to say to me, friends? We've got this person in the US, um, um, your Tucker Carlson's, right? And then in Australia, you're going to tell me you've got the bullshit bosses in the groups, right? And then in Europe, you're going to tell me you've got all the other online, the protesters and all that in Australia, right? I should have done this on the whiteboard so you could see it, right? Excuse my writing, right? You're going to say that's us. And you say, well, Paris... Who's on top delegating us, friends? Who is delegating us? Who is guiding us? Who is mentoring us? Because they're lead. Mentor. You see, if you've worked in the corporate world as I have, or in the business world like I have, you know that everything is done. They have got, they spend millions and billions of dollars on mentorship programs because they mentor their senior staff able to implement what they want in the business in the government departments or whatever who is our who are our leaders who is guiding us who is mentoring us who is guiding us because i don't know anyone who's guiding us all i see now is a lot of these bullshit groups underneath that are all politically um um motivated they're all paid from the political groups and they're all confusing the f out of everyone and you're all confused running around wondering what do we do and this is why 18 months later a lot of you are in a mess and a lot of you you've been against the the mandatory um medical stuff have actually caved well there's a few reasons why you've caved one because you've got no plan in your life You've got no plan in your life. No plans in your life. Two, you've caged because Mercury has been in retrograde. See, friends, I've been trying to teach you about Mercury in retrograde for over a year and a half now. I don't know who's listening, right? Because I've said to you from last year that all the major decisions in life, not just in Australia but all over the years that the governments have implemented, have been started and done during Mercury in retrograde. And why? Because we are tired during Mercury in retrograde. We are dizzy. We are sleepy, we are confused, and we just say, fuck this, I'm just going to get over and done with. So when Mercury retrograde is over, because Mercury retrograde was full on until yesterday, the 18th of October. But after the 18th of October, give it another two, three weeks. So we're still in it, but our mind's going to be a lot clearer. And that's when you're going to say, shit, why did I make the decisions I do? It's okay. You'll have to trip over. A lot of you will have to trip over a lot and go through a lot of problems in life to be able to get this to click in your brain. And what it is that's stopping you is that your brain is not thinking clear because of foods that you're eating or foods that you're not eating, right? Or because you're so arrogant and you're narcissist and you don't want to hear it. I'm not interested. I'm here to help people to move on with life and to manifest in high vibrations. Right? But I'm just trying to explain to you because a lot of us are married to people like this. A lot of us have family members like this. And if you can't get through to them, it's because either because they're arrogant or they've got some kind of, um, the brain's not working right. It's that simple, friends. That simple. It's that simple. No one is guiding us. All these bullshit groups under here are telling us what you want to hear. Right? What, what you want to hear. But none of them have given us solutions. Who has given you a solution? So no one's given you solutions. So what have you done? You, you, you've caved. And you've gone and gotten your medical bullshit done. 
you 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 do whatever your employers tell you you're doing whatever others are telling you because we have not been giving any solutions and this is why the elite have been able to do what they're doing i've worked for them a lot of you work for them a lot of you still work for them friends you don't realize that those of you who've been against the system they're all elite every major organization hospital business whatever they're all elite so those of you who say well i've done well you're just doing what the leader telling you so don't complain and then say oh you know i don't want to do it this and that don't complain against the elite if you're doing whatever they ask you to do it, it's that simple it's that simple if you don't like what someone is telling you you leave it's that simple if the leader big bull is to you you just leave if you don't want to leave that's your choice but don't complain that you have done something that you didn't want to do because if you didn't want to do it you don't do it you don't have a gun to your head okay we're not at the walls yet we're not there yet we'll get there but we're not at the world wars yet because this was what was happening during the wars they had guns to their head people had admit things or say things if they don't say things they get shot we're not in that position yet but we're getting there and why are we going to get there we're going to get there because a lot of you are still so arrogant and so stupid and still don't realize that all these assholes that you're following they haven't given you any solutions they're all fake they're all fake i mean look i don't know how else to say it i, I don't get it look this cup is half gray half cream look i don't get it can you see it these people haven't given you solutions and all these people who were protesters weren't really protesters some of them may have been but most of them weren't most people on facebook who have been pushing and promoting all the protests and all these group they're all they're all working for the governments all working for the governments and i knew this from last year and i wanted to see how far would they go how far would they go now friends because i had some music on and i, I like to have the music in the background and i don't know why it's gone off now friends getting back to why i am a systemized healer it's all about system and strategy i keep talking about it right i can see the possible outcomes and the possible influences as a whole healing touch i trained as a massage therapist years ago at the australian school of therapeutic massage in burwood it's not there anymore burwood or one turn i think it was burwood in melbourne astrology numerology and systems that focus on the science of healing and have a lot of scientific or research support are a comfortable fit for me if i don't have proof that something works i'm not going to follow it through i'm not going to give you bullshit. you come to me for advice and help even as a friend or as a client i'm not going to give you bullshit answers don't come to me for bullshit answers you're coming to me or you're paying for to uh, me for advice and help i'm going to give it to you straight and really try to save and help your life that's what you're coming to me for right some other healers may not think of me as a healer because of my strong intellect and linear step-by-step -step approach but i use these gifts in important ways in my healing discipline so friends if a lot of you have spoken to me and said paris you're a bit hard or whatever i'm not hard i'm realistic you come to me to solve a problem whatever it is whether it's a business problem personal problem whatever it is i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a solution i'm gonna give you a solution isn't that what you want isn't that why you're coming to me it's it's so easy there is a solution to everything but it's up to you to accept whether you really want a solution to your problem or not you just may want to whinge and be hypochondriac i'm not interested in whinges i'm not interested in hypochondriacs but if you want to keep coming to me and whinging whinging well, what i'm going to do about it as a client i'm here to there is a solution for everything do you understand that we have a certain um amount of free will not a hundred percent a certain amount of free will so you need to, to take advantage and utilize that free will and a lot of people today october 2021 in australia and all over the world are, are taking advantage of their free will as much as they can to survive and to do what they need to do in, in the world now a lot of you may think life is very bleak but a lot of people out there for me and others it's not bleak depends how you want to see friends if you want to manifest bleak that's your business if you're in the shithole get yourself out of the shithole learn how to get out of it 
Research how to get out of it. Ask other people advice, me and others, whatever. How to get out of the shithole. Stop whinging. Whinging isn't going to get you anything anywhere. You're not going to see rich people, wealthy people, upper middle class people whinging. No. Middle class, upper middle class and upwards do not whinge. They fucking get on with it. They work and they get on with it. They get on with it. This is the only way to get on with life. Before 2020 and after 2020, life hasn't changed. The skeleton of life has not changed, right? The skeleton of life has not changed. What's been implemented upon us has changed. The basics of life that has not changed. So you now, a lot of you now have to learn how to navigate to survive. This is a different type of reality. It's a different type of world, right? So you've got to learn how to navigate again around what's going on and looking for music, how to, how to navigate around so that you can survive and live. Because what other choice do you have, friends? What other choice is there for you to get on with life? What other choice do you have? What other choice do you have? Right. So I'm trying to get some music here. I can't even get free music. They're making you pay for music. Now, friends. So this is the type of healer and person and counsellor that I am. Now, Mercury and Retrograde is still around and I'm busting your balls over it. I know I am and you don't want to hear it. Well, you're going to hear it, friends, because you need to know that three to four times a year Mercury is in Retrograde and you need to be aware that every time it's in Retrograde that people, governments, people around us and all that are going to be imposing things on us that we don't want or that are in our interest. So I love Mercury and Retrograde because it exposes liars to me. It brings people from the past in my life so that I can apologize to, they can apologize to me, we can sort out any rifts that we had, whether it's family, exes, friends, right? It brings back issues for me to resolve for myself. It gives me the extra kick up my ass to do more cleaning, more organization, more filing, sorting things out on the home. Like I'm running around like, um, what was his name, that cartoon? The Road Runner. <laughs> you see me, that's how I'm running around here. But very carefully because if I fall, I'm going to screw my, my feet and I've already got issues with my feet with the osteo and all that. So I've got to be very careful. But I'm doing a million things at once. So... And, and like I said, it, the governments intentionally implement shit in our lives during Mercury retrograde because the astrologers have taught them to do that. So when you know that Mercury is in retrograde, you are prepared. And the next one coming up is Christmas week, the week of Christmas, end of December. Right, it's going to go for six weeks. So we've got another three weeks now of the shadow period towards the end. It's a bit safer. And during Mercury and retrograde, be very careful of exes coming in our life and people coming in our lives because you don't know what motives they have. Their motives aren't always good. They're not always good. You do not sign contracts. You do not buy houses. You do not buy cars. You do not make major purchases. You do not um, start new relationships. Any new friendships, be very, very careful. Try and stretch it out until preferably this week onwards. You can be a bit safer starting new friendships. But if you want to start a new intimate relationship, wait until November. Wait until the start of November. I had a wedding, Mercury retrograde. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it was madness. But what happened was, is like I've said a few times, I sacked most of the people I hired and I had to rehire new people a few days before the wedding. Because they, the ones I sacked, I sacked them because they did stupid things and said stupid things and did not follow through with what I asked them to do. So I had to sack them. They showed their true colours during Mercury and Retrograde. So it is a blessing in disguise. So a lot of you who made medical decisions and other decisions during Mercury retrograde, which were not, were not emergency decisions, were not, you're going to turn around from now onwards and say, fuck, what did I do? And you can't undo it. Can't undo it. 
I've been trying to teach you guys these things. I've been trying to do it. All right? I'm going to get onto the comments soon. Mercury retrograde. I post things. Get on Facebook. I post things all the time. Now, friends, all these bullshit freedom groups all over the world, let me stick to Australia, right? Let me stick to Australia. Who are telling you, don't listen to the radio, don't listen to the media, don't watch TV. I'm telling you, fucking listen to it every day for two minutes. Because they are telling you what they are doing to us. And this is why the freedom groups are telling you, get off media, don't watch the media. It's all bullshit. It's not bullshit. They are telling you what they're doing to us. The reasons may be bullshit. I'm not talking about the reasons. But friends, you want to build a house. You can't put the roof on until you put the fucking foundations on. The media is the foundations. Do you understand the Sky News, the radio, the TV and all that? They're doing you a favour by telling you what the government is up to, what they're doing. They're reporting to us what they are doing, what they're planning to do. We're gonna, they're in the draft process now of, the, of a pandemic law now instead of the state of emergency, right? Okay, they're in the draft process of this, the draft process of that. You've got, to con you, you've got to prepare. Oh, they wanted to implement, they implemented the mandatory vaccination in, in because Mercury retrograde started end of September and it's still going. I think they implemented it in October. They're telling us what they're doing. So don't say, oh, I didn't know this, I didn't plan on whatever. They've been telling us from last year, the year before, the year before, year before. And a lot of you prefer to be fucking blind bats Instead of, instead of watching a bit of news, you can watch it online. Whatever's on TV is online. There's no difference. There's no difference, right? To tell you what is going on and how to plan and prepare. If you don't know what's going on in your suburb, in your state, in your country, how can you plan? Some of you have said to me a few weeks ago, oh, I'm waiting to see... You know, um, I don't know what's going to be with my job. I'm waiting to see if the next few weeks if they're going to change on the mandatory vaccination. Bang, my head fucking blows up. Explodes. Thinking, what the fuck are you talking about? They've been doing, planning this for 100 years, friends. They've been delegating. You think they're going to change their plans because you're living in make-believe world? A lot, of, a lot of you aren't going to be happy with me talking like this. This is how I talk, friends. Wake up, grow up, get real. Oh, I want to leave Australia because I'm not happy with what's going on. What fucking planet are you on? This is on all over the world. This is happening all over the world. So what you're doing is you're acting like teenagers. You're hiding from your parents so you don't, they don't find you at the nightclubs. So you, you're, you're nightclub hopping so your, 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 your parents don't find where you are. And you're all country hopping, thinking that if you go from one country to another, you're escaping your problems. Problems will never leave you. We're on one planet. If you get off this planet... You still won't solve your problems because the same shit is happening on other planets and the same shit is not happening on other planets right so stop trying to escape your problems a lot of people escape with drugs alcohol sugar and shit the problem is still there friends the problem is still there start delegating to yourself in your life we don't have anyone on this planet at the moment who is leading a group the way that incredibly organised, strategic, a leader. We have no one. We have bits and pieces of people. And the only people that I listen to a bit, like I said, is Mark Passio. You can Google him, P-A-S-S-I-O, -S on YouTube. Uh, he says as, he actually is even more raw than I am. Uh, medical medium Anthony William. And the reason why I pick him out compared to other people who talk about vitamins and all the bullshit is because Anthony Williams actually has taught us and told us about, about how bacteria and other bugs have formed on this planet, man-made and natural, whereas the others don't tell you that. The others don't tell you that. And I like when you give me advice about something, I need to get to the root of it to know why it works and how it works. It's just me. Not because I don't trust your advice, no. It's just that I'm the kind of person you say, this is a pen and it's got black ink in it. I like to learn how things work. I was born that way. I like to know things work. So that when I want to eat something or use something, I know in my head, 
I look at the holistic, I don't know, just energetically, that's just how I work, right? Just so I can connect with the item that I'm using or with the food that I'm using. I need to connect with it, right? My tea's gone cold. It doesn't matter, but I need to have warm foods, right? Now, we have no guidance. We have no leadership. So what we've got to do at the moment, so you're going to say, well, Paris, what the fuck do we do now? So what we do is, is that we are going to obtain information, advice. You get a bit from me. You get a bit from others. You get a bit of this. This is what I do. I get a bit from Anthony. get a bit from Mark. I get a bit from this. I get a bit from that. And I collateral that information to accommodate the life that I want and how I want to live. And for my health. And for my well-being. For my household. You do that. So it's like getting, um, yeah, you, you, you get advice here and there. You pay for it. You get it free. You do whatever. And you see what works for you. This is the only choice we have at the moment. Because you have been bombarded the past 18 months online in Australia with all these all these videos that have stuffed your head, have filled your aura with so much bleak and darkness and negativity that 24-7 a lot of you are just now have got so much negative crap around you that you don't know how to get rid of it. So you can ask me, Paris, yes, I was listening to all these videos and whatever, what do I do now? How do I get rid of all this negative energy around my aura? And in my mind, I wake up with it, I go to sleep with it, whatever. Stop watching these repeat videos that, you, that are saying the same thing, just different people, isn't it? It's the same shit, different day. Same shit, different video. Stop watching them. You have not learned anything different. They have not helped you in your life. Stop watching them. Just stop. Just stop watching them. Once a week if you want. Just watch one. Once a month. Stop watching it. Cleanse yourself. You need at least a month to cleanse from this shit. Be on social media. Look at what people post. Look at South South, whatever. Don't watch these how many deaths have happened how many cases have happened, all this stuff that you, we've been watching for 18 months, they have achieved nothing. So whilst the organised strategic elite have gotten on with their life and their finances and their lifestyles, we're stuck back here, not we, a lot of people are stuck back here, screwed, no jobs, don't know where you're standing. You're stressed as hell. You don't know what's going on. Well, that is your experience to know that you have the control and the ability to manage what comes in your life and what goes out. And if you want to continue watching this shit and, oh, blaming the government, oh, blaming Andrews, oh, fucking de sake, Dan Andrews, oh, fuck ScoMo, Oh, blame this person, blame, 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 playing, playing the blame game. You will never, ever, 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 ever take accountability for yourself and be responsible for yourself because you're a hypercontract and you're a whinger. Stop blaming other people. Get off your fucking ass and do something for yourselves to get on with life. These things are influencing us, have always influenced us, but I don't know where a lot of you have been. You must have lived such a perfect life perfect life before 2020 suddenly all these distractions are in your life and you're whinging because if you had any distractions in your life prior to 2020 you would have learned as a human being how to manage a lot of these problems you wouldn't be whinging now okay you'd be saying the government are assholes doing that but you wouldn't even be saying that have you heard me saying that have you heard me complaining about them why should I complain about what our premiers, our prime ministers and all that are doing? That's their character, that's their role, that's their job. They are following through with their organisation. They're following through with their organisation. Why should I blame them? Where's my organisation? Where's my organisation? That's why I said all these funding groups have all distracted us, have all lied to us. They're the ones you should be jumping on. Because they've lied to you. See, they've said to you, we're going to get you, you know, we're going to help with your freedom, move on with freedom, move on with freedom. And they haven't done it. 
Whereas the elite, they've never promised that. The elite have said there's a there's a new future. There's a new uh, there's a new uh, reality. What do they call it? They they're telling you to your face what has been implemented and planned. And they're still paying the salaries. They're still paying them to be in the positions that they are. Because all governments are the same. There's no difference. So what you have to do in the interim now is you've got to look at how to survive because if you don't look at how to survive and be healthy and strong, you won't have the energy to fight back when we have to fight back. Well, we should be fighting back now, right? We should be fighting back now. That's what's going on now. Now, friends, look at astrology. The full moon, October the 20th, which is tomorrow, right? Because today is the 19th of October. Now you need to know that when there are full moons and all that and all the rest of it, the energies have, have already kicked in three weeks before, three weeks after. Sometimes they can go on for months. Depends on your horoscope, blah, blah, blah. So the full moon, in, and I don't believe any astrologers that are out there in the public, but I just get the bits and pieces which I know which are applicable. So the full moon, October 20th, 2021, is opposite Mars, my ruling sign, and square Pluto. Listen, friends, we've all got all the planets in our horoscopes. Just know that. All the planets are in our horoscopes, right? Now, let's see what it says on here. It always says full moon meeting. Full moon aspect. I'm going to get to the, to the, this full moon is in Aries. And if you know any Aries, man, especially the negative, if they've got negative shadows, absolute assholes. Right? If they've got the negative, if the negative aspect of it is controlling their life. So, remember, we've still got the energies of Mercury retrograde. So, you add the full moon of sight in Aries on top of that. I mean, it's going to be fireworks. Um, it's in the constellation of Pisces, blah, 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 blah. It's in Aries. Uh, let's have a look. I'll tell you. The summary. Right. This is a challenging aspect, hello, surprise, challenging, that creates a very competitive environment. Now, competitive is not just in business, friends. It could be competitive in a relationship or, you know, what's happening at the moment in society, there is some kind of competition. The elite want to do what they want to do. The non-elite want to do what they want to do. So there's that conflict, right? It's a challenging aspect that creates a very competitive environment. It can make it intense. In your desire to succeed to the extent of becoming ruthless and aggressive. Did you hear that, friends? To the extent where people want to become ruthless and, and aggressive. So people who are domestic violent people are going to be even more ruthless and aggressive. The elite are going to be even more ruthless and aggressive. Those of us who are anti-elite are going to be even more ruthless and aggressive. So remember those words, ruthless and aggressive. Now, there's no need to be to when you want to when you want to prove a point or do something don't take it from the aggressive aspect though because aggression will bring on aggression try and be diplomatic try and be um manipulative in a good sense diplomatic is a better word than manipulative right because manipulative can have a negative connotation it doesn't have to but generally people see it that way so if you want something done try and navigate around and do it in a different way so you don't have to be aggressive or leave that situation ruthless. But these people who are ruthless and aggressive are the narcissists, the psychopaths, whether they're lead or not. We all have them in our families. Every family has got narcissists and, 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 and psychopaths. Every family. Now, so we need to be prepared. Steadiness, determination and final success. It also gives a spiritual development to transform the intense energy of, Mar of Mars, square Pluto, into the determination and perseverance to achieve your most passionate desires. Now, when you, re when you read these things, and I'll post this link up on my profile page about the full moon, don't you see it from your point of view, oh, I can achieve my most passionate desires. Because the governments will be achieving the most passionate desires. The psychopaths will be doing the same. Uh, like I said, domestic and, and emotional abusive and physical abusive people will want to achieve the most passionate desires. Employers will want to do what they want. 
Employees will want to do what they want. So ju don't just think about yourself and say, oh, wow, I'll be able to do what I want to do. No, because all the other psychopaths will want to do the same thing. So if you think Mercury and Richard Grade brought out the mandatory medical bullshit, right, already they implemented their passionate desire, watch what's going to happen now. Like they, they plan everything around all these energies so that they can manifest it. Remember the topic of this talk today of my chat with you guys is about how to manifest. It's choosing the right time and energy to do something. Video cutting out every 10 seconds. It's not a good thing. The end, the, when I post the video, it may not be cutting out every 10 seconds. It could be my um, Wi-Fi. Right? So, let's see how the full moon affects in Australia. It says that in Australia, the full moon is at its peak. 21st of October, which is on the Wednesday in Australia, at 1.56 in the morning. It doesn't matter. It's a few weeks before, a few weeks after. Right. So if my... So let me know. If you can't hear me, it's no point me talking. Right. So friends, I found a book. I'm going to post the topic of it. Let me know. If I keep cutting out, I'll just end the video. There's no point if you can't see it, unless it's just you guys. Is anyone else watching? Let me know if the video keeps cutting out. Now, friends, I found a great book here. Can you see? Mega Trends 2000. So this book was published in 1990. 1990. And they're telling us what the mega trends are of the year 2000 and around that time. Excuse me. My tears made me burp a little. Now, I've got... Yes, I do burp. I'm human too. Yes, I'm human. Now, I have very briefly, briefly skipped through it just before my chat today with my dear friends to see what I can say to you guys about what was written in 1990 and what was even no decades and even centuries before. Very interesting, friends. I don't know if anyone else has read this book. Right. Do you know that in China, so this book here, if you look at the contents, I'm going to be very brief, friends, because I know we've all got shit to do in our life. Right? And you know that when I talk to you like this informally, I say it raw. So these are the contents. I don't know if you can see. Right? So I've got to change my frame rate. That's what it's saying. I don't know how to do it while I'm talking. So the contents are the global economic boom of the 1990s. Yes, the global economic boom. While well, Australia was going through a recession, the 1990s. My goodness, were businesses booming. How can you go through a recession and a boom at the same time? Because the recession is just for the middle class and the boom is for the upper, upper middle and onwards. Renaissance in the arts. The emergence of... And Renaissance was actually the name of the massage therapy business that I had. The emergence of free market socialism, global lifestyles and cultural nationalism, the privatisation of the welfare state. Do you understand what that means? The privatisation of the welfare. Because once upon a time, the government used to have the welfare community centres, organisations and all that. But now they've privatised it. So once you privatise welfare, well, they'll be giving lo lobotomies to all of us just so they can make money out of it. The rise of the Pacific Rim, the Pacific areas, work for this. Decade of women in leadership. Yep, I said it at the start, what's going on with women in leadership. The age of biology. Oh, there's a lot of biology shit. This transgender shit. Now, friends, I was watching, because I love my TV, like I said, I was watching Louis Thoreau. You know Louis Thoreau, that Jewish guy that does all these great documentaries on the BBC channel? Well, because I've got Fox on that. And he was showing how and he had a program on the weekend about transgender kids. And I'm thinking, these parents who are enabling their kids to become, to get on medication as children, to become transgender, are committing the biggest crime in humanity. The biggest crime in humanity. 
Because if that was the case when I was a child, I then should have been a boy too. I was playing with trains and cowboys and Indians, and I've been wearing, and and I mean, I did a lot of mess about male stereotypical things, but it didn't mean that I had to change my sex to become a male because we've all got male and female hormones. Is that only natural for us to like male and female stuff? Anyway. So a lot of things that you guys are missing out on, not watching, a lot of documentaries and a lot of shows online to see how people are surviving, how people are living, and what people do to survive in life, to give you ideas and hints. And what's happening out there? It's another topic. The Age of Biology. It's in this book. Religious Revival of the Third Millennium and Triumph of the Individual. Now, very briefly, I'm going to go through some topics here. Gold Coast. Did you know, friends, that in China, in China, this is a topic about China, not China, they have a section of their, now listen to this, there's a section called Gold Coast, and friends, if you don't know, we have a state in Australia called Queensland, right? And there is a suburb called Gold Coast. And what's happened is most of the Gold Coast now, it's along the beach there near Surface Paradise, and a lot of the Gold Coast area is full of businesses and shops and retail and souvenir shops and restaurants, stuff and whatever. And most of them, if not all of them, have been rented or bought out by Chinese slash Asians. They call it the Gold Coast. Now, Western business people wonder about the fate of China's Gold Coast because China, in China, have an area called Gold Coast also. See, the gold manifests gold, manifests abundance, and coasts, coast, okay, right? And the China has a Gold Coast program which targeted coastline province, pro, provinces like Guangdong and Fujian for the rapid development of low-wage, low-wage export-oriented industries. They've done the same in Queensland, friends. They've manifested the same. Why, friends? Why, why, why? Because they have a fucking plan, strategy. They've got the Gold Coast in China and they manifested it in Australia. Do you understand that the name Gold Coast didn't just appear in Australia? It wasn't some dink and mozzie wearing a fucking billabong who said, let's call that area Gold Coast. The Chinese are behind it. For nothing to do. There's nothing wrong with it. They're smart enough to be organized strategic to manifest what they want. Good on them. Good on them. Now, right? That's one thing there. It's all in this book, friends. It's telling us everything that's going. There's a lot of books. A lot of books out there. You go to second hand shops. 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, I would go to so many. Even though I was so debilitated, sick, with chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, a lot of other shit in my life, but nothing stopped me. I didn't sit down. I kept going, kept working, kept moving on. I would work and crash at home. Work, crash at home, because you get on with life. Right? I had bills to pay. I've got mortgages to pay in that. And I would go to all the secondhand bookshops here in Melbourne. There's a lot of them. And I would get so many books. Read, 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 learn, 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 learn. Next. You can do all that stuff online too if you can't get out. Next. Now look what it says here, friends. It's telling us what's going on in the world beyond Asia, right? Because a lot of you think, oh, what's going on in the world? The government's doing this now. The government's doing that now. No, it's been going on for thousands of years. I just don't know where you've been. Don't know where you've been now. you got your head out of... Uh, 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 from under the rock and, you, and you're finding out what's going on, right? Now, beyond Asia, well, I'm telling you this because I'm mentioning Australia. You want to know, right, the country we live in? That's happening, what's happening there and down under. As the Pacific Rim heats up economically, this is in the 1900s, 1990, this was written. Because it did, friends. It did, friends. 30 years ago when I was 20, I was learning all about globalisation, when I was 20 years old and when I was in trade, in business, and I was reading all about the European Union and globalisation and all that and, and trade and how everything is going to be one house instead of ten houses, as in countries, we're all going to be linked. We are all linked, right? 
And I knew how businesses was, were working. I was dealing with Hong Kong, dealing with China, dealing with a lot of countries in Europe. And I was seeing how things were happening. And there was so much business going on. They are using the slave labor in Asia, using slave labor in India. Slave, slave, slave. And this is what's going to happen in Australia, friends. You see, same thing. They are breaking us to the point where if we want a job, we will have to be working for $5 an hour if we're lucky. We'll have to be working for five bucks an hour if we're lucky. This is how they make money. They plan, plan, plan. This is how Apple and all these other companies have made money. Slave labor. And we're buying all the iPhones for 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, whatever that just costs five bucks to make. And everything else that we're buying, let's not complain. We have contributed towards slave labor. So now it's our turn to be slaves. Friends, you cannot contribute towards abuse and not expect to be abused back. It's coming back to us, friends. Australia. As the Pacific Rim heats up economically, Australia has been trying to think Asian. Australia in the 1900 has been trying to think Asian. During much of its history, Australia identified with Britain. Well, you know what? Because a lot of the convicts who stole a piece of bread to eat who were kicked out by the royal queen the royalty to come to australia we used the Ast british and irish were used as slaves by the rich british and irish to set up the big estates and businesses that they now have down in the mornington peninsula in sydney turak and all that how do you think these people made money? It's got nothing to do with brain. Using us as slaves, it's that simple. It's just use and abuse. Right? So Australia, for much of its history, identified with Britain. That is understandable considering its roots in the British Commonwealth. Since World War II, its people, the Commonwealth countries, have rather favoured the United States, which, after all, saved Australia from the Japanese. So the United States said to the Australia, well, we're going to save your ass from the Japanese, but we want this from you. And what does the US want from us? To do whatever they ask of us. You know, they say that America coughs and we sneeze. It's not a joke, friends. It's not a joke. And America is in the in the asses and the underwear of the Chinese. So if America's doing that, we've got to do whatever America wants. We've got to do the same shit. But that's okay. It doesn't matter if we do it. As long as the pockets are lined with money so that we can go gallivanting, cruising and holidaying and buying all the designer shit. It doesn't matter if we abuse and use slaves to live our lives right. It doesn't matter. As long as we can live this bullshit Kardashian lifestyle, does it matter, friends? Does it matter? Doesn't matter. But it does now, because now we are screwed and used as slaves. Ha! So now what we allowed for to happen to others is happening to us. Well, friends, what did you expect? But now, as we move towards the century of the Pacific, Australia is beginning to fill its role as a key part of the Pacific Rim economy and is slowly beginning to identify with its emerging Asian partners. Well, we have no choice, friends. When you want to live a, pre a pretentious Kardashian lifestyle, you got to do whatever your business partners tell you to do. Because most of Australian businesses, if not all of them, have all been bought out by international conglomerates. You see, you may hear that an Australian big, big, big business has bought out other small businesses, but look at where that Australian big business, where the roots are. They're all European, American, English. They're all overseas. They're all overseas, friends. Now, the land down under is ripe. This is in 1990. The land down under is ripe for foreign investment. In the fiscal year ending June 1988. How old was I? I was 20 then. I was 20 in 88 because I was born in 68. In the fiscal year ending June 1988, 
Australia attracted in 1988 nearly four billion dollars in foreign investments so you really think they give a shit about us friends we don't have any money we don't have that money why do they give a shit about us we're just their slaves 20 percent coming from japan so friends america saved australians ass from a from japanese so the Americans saved Australia from the Japanese. America said to Australia, we will help you so that the Japanese don't screw you. And Australia said, thank you. Yes, we'll do whatever you want if you save us. But in 1988, Japanese investment was 20% in Australia. So the Japanese are still screwing us. <laughs> Can you see what's going on? Can you see what's going on? Can you see it, friends? The nation's tourism industry in Australia is amongst the fastest growing in the world. Well, it was. It's only because of the Asians, supporting the Asian businesses. Other booming industries include real estate. Well, we know what's going on with the real estate. Finance, manufacturing, insurance. Now, let me tell you something about real estate, friends. Not only did I study it in 1997 and I wanted to become a real estate agent and I worked in real estate and I thought, this is a lot of shit, but I should have stuck in there become a, a real estate bitch and i would probably have one of the biggest real estate firms of this country right because i love property development and real estate not just because i love it but it's in my family my father was in real estate i was in i love real estate i love sales and i'm an honest real estate person that is the difference i'm honest and strategic if you look at properties that were two million dollars two years ago they've gone up a million in a year they've gone up so much this is Australia we're not talk we're talking about. This is not New York. It's not Manhattan. This is not the Hamptons. This is not, you know, Cut the Zoo. It's not Monte Carlo and all that. This is Australia. Boring as fuck country we're in. It's boring. We have no lifestyle, no nightlife, no nothing. I'm not talking about the druggy life that and that. I'm talking about a nice, great Dolce Vita top lifestyle. Right? We've got none of that. And yet our real estate is so high. So what's happening is, is a lot of these people from overseas are buying real estate here because the more real estate they buy, the more they can control the country, right? The more they own. Look at who owns the land, Mornington Peninsula. Look who owns the land everywhere else. It's land ownership. Monopoly. Remember Monopoly? One of my favorite games. I still have it. Right? A world a booming industry is in finance. Well, of course it's in finance. It's got to be connected in finance. So what happens is your overseas companies, finance-based companies, buy at a lot of the companies here. They do all their mergers, acquisitions, and they share the profits and the losses overseas, backwards and forwards. It's, it's anyway, anyway, if some of you understand what I'm saying, you understand. Manufacturing. Other booming industries include manufacturing. We don't have a manufacturing industry in Australia. So I don't know why it's saying it's manufacturing, right? But I'll tell you what is manufacturing. See, like when you're Gina Reinhardt's and all them are sending all their iron ore and all that, all the minerals overseas, the raw materials over in China, China then sells the raw materials back to us and now the raw materials have, have hit the roof the past few months because the Chinese and all the rest, people are saying, oh, you know, there's no raw materials. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. There's plenty of raw materials, but the Chinese and the others are using our raw materials for themselves and not sending it back to us and they're sending it sporadically or very little amounts to pump up the prices on purpose to sell it more expensive to us. So, friends, it's not me having raw materials to make a cake. And I've got the raw materials to make a cake. I make the cake and I sell it to you. So, if I've got the raw materials, why am I selling them to you to make the cake and to sell it? Because then you've got control of the final product. Because we, Australia, is so abundant, so abundant in a lot of minerals that we could have had a manufacturing industry here but no friends but you see no 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 because Australians don't want to be slaves in the manufacturing industry so they have the manufacturing industries over in India Bangladesh Vietnam China let's use people as slaves there and we pay top price for materials now it's our turn to be the slaves friends you watch what's going to happen you'll remember me so, 
once we enter the next millennium which is 2000 from the year 2000 onwards and now we're 221 we will feel the impact of more of the countries in the pacific Rim, including mexico ecuador north korea vietnam and all the others but today the focus is on asia today the focus is on asia right so that's one thing there that's one thing there let me tell you more stuff here well you need to know these friends because this is the holistic picture i've had a plan your life right this is the holistic picture so i'm saying we have been screwed you've been screwed for all these online groups that are telling you one thing they're all political groups this is really interesting friends did you know let's have a look here there's a section on biology right section on now when people are buffeted by change meaning we're cornered by change the need for spiritual belief intensifies so what happens is the past year all this stuff that was going on people suddenly started to talk about your gods online and all this and whatever in even more so why because <laughs> i can't believe it look where we were at where's god where's jesus like where are all your allies coming to save your sorry asses they know where they're not coming you think they're stupid you really think that there's people out there that are going to save our asses? You really think that there's one person, one strength, one person out there? There's a lot of strong spiritual beings out there. And when they see, they saw last November, 2020 in Victoria, when we were told that we're going to get out of lockdown just before Christmas. And what did you guys all do? You all knew about the elite shit. You all knew what's going on in the world and all that. And what did you do? You went and all booked your bullshit fucking tickets and went on holidays. So when all these spiritual beings out there, these highest spiritual beings, see that instead of, you'll know what's going on in life, you'll see it. And instead of you making high vibration spiritual decisions to heal this planet and heal this life and to become of a higher vibration, instead of you doing things like that, you went out there fucking doing your holiday shit So what's happening now is that just before Christmas again, because history repeats itself, they're going to let us out of our prisons, our home prisons, which I never see my home as a prison anyway. I do whatever I want whenever I want. And they're going to let you all loose. What are you going to do? You're going to go book your fucking holidays again. And then this time next year, we're going to go through the same shit. And the following year, and the following year, and the following year, and why is this happening? Because we have no leadership. We have no guidance. You have no guidance and leadership in your life. Now, friends, towards the millenniums, as the dawn of the third millennium, this is 1990, this is written in 1990, as the dawn of the third millennium, there are unmistakable signs of a worldwide multi-denominational religious revival. American baby boomers who rejected organized religions in the 70s are returning to church with their children in tow or joining the New Age movement. And as I've said many times, the New Age movement is just an elite religion. Now, why this is happening? Because, friends, it is in our human soul nature to want to yearn for not only love but also security and some kind of calmness and peace and organisation in our life. So we have been looking for that. We've been yearning for that because that is our soul, those of us who have it. So we are constantly looking for people and places who can give us that guidance. And because the nasty narcissists know that, they set up your hill songs, they set up all these religions, they set up all these organizations, all these freedom groups to make you feel like you belong somewhere, to make you feel like you've got someone to protect you. Because what is it we all want, friends? We all want protection. We all want protection. We want protections from our husbands, from our wives, 
from our parents, but we're not getting that. So we're scrambling around. As soon as someone says, it's just like that's why a lot of women get fooled in relationships because their manipulative partners will say, oh, I'll love you, I'll protect you. Sorry I made this mistakes before. I'll be there to have your back. And then you find out they've been screwing around. And this is what's happened, is that we have fallen into the trap of trusting people and individuals to think that they have our back. Oh, the truckies are going to save us. They're going to protest for our freedoms. Oh, the construction workers are going to save our arsons work for our freedoms. Oh, you know, these groups are doing this. They're all bullshit. They've distracted us. So that it's October 2021, 80 months later, we missed the boat last year. We are at the stage now of mandatory medical stuff, or mandatory this or mandatory that. This is where we are at. And it is going to be a little harder to undo where we are at. And I'll tell you why. Because I'll give you my take on it, friends. I believe... I believe that they, that the elite have created a storyline to make a lot of people believe what is happening now. And I'm very general with what I'm saying. And those of you who have got it a bit up here can understand what I'm saying. So that when they really do the real thing and really fill our skies with even more chemicals, those people whose immune systems have, have now been weakened, those of you who have had a lot of things done to your bodies, you have weakened your immune system. And what's going to happen is that next year, from next year, from January onwards, you're going to start feeling the physical um, uh, results of what you have put into your bodies. Because it takes a couple of months plus stress. You add emotional stress to anything, right? You add emotional stress. That's why, you know, when you've got a problem, they say, have you got family around you to support you and all that? Because talking to people about your problems, who understand you and care for you, all that emotional stress that you've got, that helps you recover quickly, whether you've been in a physical accident or an emotional issue. So now if you've got something put in you, whether it's aspirins, whether because, you know, the last 10 years in the body, but other medical stuff or whatever, plus stress, your immune system is, is going to be very weak. Plus the extra things that they're going to be putting in the skies and everything else. It's going to weaken you every more. So what's going to happen in my mind is a lot of people are going to be falling very ill and the governments are going to say, their leader going to say, oh, the people who are vaxxed are very ill because the unvaxxed they have passed the disease to them. Because remember, they've been saying that this is not 100%. They've been saying it. And they've been saying that because then they want to blame someone else for it. That the unvaxxed are passing on these viruses. Because they're not going to say that, oh, it's in the sky or it's in the foods or here and there. They're not going to say that, are they? Been, they're going to do it that way. So that's my take on it. That's my take on it. Now, the age of biology. Can you believe, friends, listen to this, a Japanese guy. Isao Karubi of the Tokyo Institute of Technology has developed a freshness chip. Fresh, you know fresh? Um, fresh. Right? Freshness chip, microchip. A device consisting entirely of artificially engineered proteins and organic polymers, P-O-L-Y-M-E-R-S, that will be built into packets of fish, 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 sold in supermarkets. When a fish begins to decay, it produces aromatic chemicals that the freshness chip detects long before it would be apparent to the nose. When a patch on the fish changes colour, customers and management know the fish's best day are over. 
freshness chips for other foods will follow freshness chips friends we've got all the fucking foods are gonna be having freshness chips you won't see this chip you can't see it it's invisible with the eye this biomolecular device is a living computer the next step expected within a decade now remember friends this book was written in 1990 so expected within a decade which was up to the year 2000 is an artificial nose a chip that could detect a wide variety of odors during evolution the earliest brain structures were devoted to the sense of smell biology is perhaps a better route to an artificial listen to this friends biology is perhaps a better route to an artificial nervous system than the electronics road to artificial intelligence so what this book is saying and we know all about artificial intelligence and what's going on but they're saying that controlling biology is a better route to an artificial nervous system uh, nervous system remember friends we've got the vagus nerve right from behind our uh, just under our scalp here too i think it's our waist the vagus nerve that is the computer of the body with the thyroid is the computer of the body but the vagus nerve controls everything if your vagus nerve isn't working well then you're going to have a lot of other issues v-a-g-u-s i'm not talking las vegas right so what they have been planning for a long time is right is devoting molecular by molecular devices by controlling an artificial nervous system right because if you can control that you can control everything and this is from our dear friends the japanese who the americans we're going to save our sorry asses from now friends triumph of the individual now you know what i don't like about the new age industry it's all about me 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 little me how i meditate me raise vibrations me all about me 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 fuck everyone else it's all about me and why the elite new age industry has done that is so that you are all blind to everything and everyone else around you i don't you don't give a fuck about tv radio i don't care what my neighbors are doing whatever it's all about me 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 this is what the new age industry promotes you see oh all the pains in my body and the stresses around me it's not my fault it's because all the negative shit around me is is in my energy it's nothing to do with me no, it's not me. It's not my accountability, not my responsibility. To everyone else, all this negative shit I'm copying around me. It's not me. Right? Now, the great unifying theme of the conclusion of the 20th century is the triumph of the individual. Threatened by blah, 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 individuals are meeting the millennium more powerfully than ever before. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, the 1990s, because that's... Let's face it, that's when the new age industry really went bang, the 1990s. I characterized by new respect for the individual as the foundation of society and the basic unit of change. Mass, mass, M-A-S-S movements are a misnomer, meaning we're not interested. Mass. Get it, friends? The elite are doing mass. Where is our mass? Where is our collective guide? Where is where is everyone here working together? There is none. None. Why? Because all the sport brat generations of the twenty of the teenagers, twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, it's all about me, 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 me. Fuck everyone else. It's everyone else's fault for what's going on. Right? That's what's happening here. So the environmental movement, the women's movement, the anti-nuclear movement were built once one consciousness at a time by an individual persuaded by the possibility of a new reality. Listen to this. Individual responsibility. The first principle of the New Age movement is the doctrine of individual responsibility. Right? The doctrine of individual responsibility it is a westernized version of the ancient instant dogma of karma blah 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 blah. as the bible puts it if you believe in the bible and all that as you sow so you shall reap well friends those of you who follow the bible and read the bible and it says here as you sow so shall you reap then you won't be surprised with what's going on in the world 
because a lot of you that are online on the Facebook groups and all that are all about the Bible and God's and Jesus's, then you shouldn't be surprised because if you're all buying clothes made in China, buying phones made in India and China and all that, you've been supporting the slave industry so now it's your time to, 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 to cop the shit. Right? I mean, you follow the Bible. They say, as you sow, you sh sow, you shall reap. Individual responsibility, however, stresses the present. Each individual is responsible for everything he or she does. This is not an every man for himself type of individualism, gratifying one's desires for blah, blah, blah. It is an ethical. So what happened was the individuals were meant to, what was happening, friends, is that in the 90s, there was trying to be a movement of people being to see ourselves as individuals, women to see ourselves as individuals, not just in the shadow of our husbands or in our brothers or our fathers, right? But what happened was, is the elite added the Kardashian shit to it, the designer stuff to it, and all this other stuff in life. And instead of people focusing on building our confidence and building ourselves and our strengths, and our knowledge and our strength within us as individuals, we have become selfish, pretentious, and it's all about things and what we can have as individuals. You see, the, the, the concept of becoming an individual is great, right? But an individual for what reason? Is, is it great to be an individual to feel strong as a woman so that we can give strength to our partners and give strength in addition to ourselves, to our children and to our environment and to volunteer and to be strong in that sense? Or is it just to be strong just for our, what we want, for our own benefit? So what's happened is now, the generations up to the 50s at least, we are all about me and we're all about being individuals. Oh, I deserve this, I want this, I want that. But you're not giving back. You're only helping your kids. So that they can have money, so that they can help you and look after you when you're older. Or so that you can show the Joneses, oh look, my kids have got this house and this car. They've got more than what your kids do. That's the individualism that has been, that is happening right now. That's what's been going on, right? So the new age industry was very smart, the elite new age industry, to promote that type of individual individuality, right? Even volunteers, a lot of people who volunteer in organisations and all that, they're not doing it because their heart really wants it. They just want to show people that, oh, I'm volunteering at the local hospitals and local charities just so pe people can pat them on the back and make them feel that they're special as individuals. I've worked and I've volunteered in all these places. Most of them are absolutely up their asses. Excuse my language, friends, but this is a morning chat, right? Globalization and individualization. This new era of the individual is happening simultaneously with the new era of globalization. See, friends? The globalization that I was talking about business before. Globalization just means that all countries work as one. That's what it means, right? That they're all you know, trading with one another, working as one, hiding money in countries like the Australians hide money in other countries, other countries hide money in Australia. It's all covering each other's ass. That's all it is, globalization. Financially, it's all to do with money. It's all about money, right? So this new era of the individual, so imagine that you've got the selfish individuals and you've got the globalization. You can imagine all hell's broken loose. That's why we are where we are. The 1990s will be largely devoted to the full realization of one single global economy. As we globalize, individuals become more important, more powerful. That's a good thing. But if you're a narcissist and psychopath, it's not a good thing. This change is reflected in the media. In this, the age of global television, two to three, blah, 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 people watch, you know, like the game. So what it's saying is that you can watch a lot of things now on TV that is happening all over the world. You can listen to a lot of things. A lot of you don't want to. You're missing out on what's going on. The demise of the collective. The triumph of the individual signals the demise of the collective. The triumph, the lifting up of the individual is dropping the collective. And that's what's happening here. See, the elite have got the collective, collective plus the collective plus the individual slash globalization. And what have we got here, friends? We've, have we got individual strength? No. 
Have we got globalized strength here? No. Have we got collective strength? No. We got nothing. I'll be in a second, Jada. I'm coming. Even communists are persuaded that only the individual creates wealth. Even the communists have been brainwashed to believe that only the individual creates wealth. Right? Gorbachev in Russia said, right? What was required for the Russia was a new individual-based socialism. So what that means is, is they have given grants and money and, and all that to individuals in Russia and all over the world, including Australia. Because let's face it, all the, all the companies in Australia are all funded by the government. It's all the grants they get from the government. It's not loans, grants. And it has allowed individuals, senior staff and all that, to make the money that they're making. Unions concede that people must be rewarded for the individual efforts. You know why, friends? See, what's happened in Australia, friends, is that the unions, that's why the unions are backed by the rich. Because they gave, because the unions, who are all bullshit now, have all allowed individuals the past 40, 50 years to make money as individuals, right? And then they say, well, we've given you grants. We've backed you up. Now you've got to back up our union. Unions are all politically run, all of them. Right. Now, something I was going to tell you something here that was political. Something about political, and I can't find it now. I should have marked it. It was actually talking about politics. And it, it is, I've got to read it to you guys because this is very um, applicable to what's happening in Australia now. Right? And what's happening to in America, or Australia, all over the world. And what's happening? I've got to find it now under politics. So friends, you're probably saying, well, Paris, how does this apply to me? Everything that's going on in the world, everything that's going on in the world is impacting us. Absolutely everything. And if you don't hear, I found it. I found it. If you don't want to know and listen to what's going on in the world, you're going to be left behind. You've got to start, you've got to force yourself to read more, learn more, research more. Because, like, what's, like, this is what life's about. It's not just about buying designer shoes, designer clothes, which I have nothing against. It's not about just, you know, living life or whatever. The reason we have come, the reason why we exist on this planet and other planets is so that we can better our souls and better our lives and we're not there we're not even close I mean we've gone from living a 3d life a, th a third dimensional life we've gone like beyond zero we've gone beyond zero why because we have allowed a pretentious greedy narcissistic lifestyle to control us we are all narcissists we are we are all greedy some at, at more levels than others. Most of us are. Right? It's really hard to live in a society and not get influenced by who's wearing what, who's got this and that and whatever. We all have it in us. But we have to acknowledge it and we have to not allow it to control our life. Because that's what's happened. It's controlled our life. And it was not a coincidence that 2020, that they let you implement it big time what they've implemented. Because they have waited until we've all become sport brats. They have waited until we've all become arrogant. It's all about me, me. They have waited until we've all got health problems. Every single one of you out there has got health issues, whether you know it or not. I don't care what you're eating. I don't care how you're eating. We've all got health issues. They've all pumped us up with bullshit in the air and in the foods and in vaxxers and whatever. So they've waited until... Everything was in place. Go, we're going through divorces. We, you know, every family's got drug problems in their kids or parents or whatever. They waited until we are so, so weak emotionally and physically. I said, bang, we're going to get them fucking now. Now we fucking got them. Because you know what, friends? I'm fucking tired. I'm fucking tired. But I'll push myself. And I'll tell you, when I say that I ask my angels... Every day what I want. I'm not fucking kidding. I'm not making it up. 
You don't see me wearing fucking feathers and shit and whatever. I'm not making it up. I'm serious. I'm serious. I, I need strength. I ask him every day, give me strength, give me physical strength, give me emotional strength, whatever. No fucking elite can take that away from you. I don't care if you're in bed and you can't move, you're in a fucking coma. You can still ask your angels to strengthen you and get you out of that shit. Do you understand that they can do what they want? They can do this, they can stick it up for us, they can do anything. They cannot take us away or stop us from asking our angels, your spiritual beings, your gods, or whatever you want to call them, they cannot stop you from asking them for help and strength. And this is the problem, is that you're waiting for them to help you, but you're not asking. Not asking. I mean, every fucking day you ask them, give me strength. Let this happen. Let that happen. Have any of us out there asked them to stop the elite doing what they're doing? No one has. We haven't stopped them. We haven't stopped them. If you don't ask your angels what you want, if we don't ask them what we want, they're not going to do it because why? There is free will in this universe. There is free will. There is free will. And that's why I thought, I said, listen, I mean, I'm under the pump. I thought, I reckon I've got to start doing quick meditation shit online. Whether I do it through live YouTube or live Facebook, just to remind myself, just to remind myself to ask the angels to get us out of this stuff. And that's why I said, who's interested in doing this meditation stuff with me? I'm just going to be online just like now, and I'm just going to be getting out my magic wand. With my magic wand, I'm selling like uh, not wand. I'm going to teach you all how to become strong energetically, spiritually, right? Energetically, whatever you want to call it. And ask our angels. Like, we can do it now. Ask our angels. Stop the elite doing what they're doing. We don't like what's going on, angels. Fucking stop the assholes from doing what they're doing. It's that simple. We've got to ask. We don't ask. Not asking. What are the elite doing? They are fucking asking. They're delegating. And just like there are loving good energy um, gods and, and loving angels, there are negative energies. They are asking the negative energies to implement what they want upon us. They are asking them. They're bowing to these negative energies, these negative entities. Whether they're from the universe, whether they're from other planets or whatever, they're asking. That's why they're achieving what they're achieving. We haven't asked. We waited for your fantasies, for your bosses, for your reignite democracies. We waited for all these other bullshit groups that are all dark souls to get us out of this shit. This is the problem. Got to start asking. Now, I'm going to close up with this one. I've got to get to, I've got to, get to the children. I've got my children. Right? Now listen to this. This is about politics and you need to know this. Right? Have you heard of entrepreneurial politics? I love that word, entrepreneur. I wish I was an entrepreneur. Always wanted to be an entrepreneur. It's a Sagittarius I've got in me. Right? Now, but I didn't meet a man to support me with my entrepreneurial skills. What do I do? What do I do? So I do what I can. Right, now. Entrepreneurial politics. Here we go. Entrepreneurs in the global economy. Entrepreneurs just means individuals who get together, great business ideas, great strategies, they implement them and they build huge businesses, corporations or whatever, right? Citizen diplomacy is the extraordinary arena where individuals can take personal responsibility for international relations. Blah, 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 blah. Hang on a second. Wait. I'm planting things in your subconscious. Right now. The shift is from party politics to entrepreneurial politics. Now we know that, friends. We know that. That's why they put your bullshit artist Trump into 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 government in America. And that's why they put people like what's his name in Australia? Turnbull. Because Turnbull is an entrepreneur. Right? And you'll find that a lot of people in Australian politics. They've got businesses lurking in the background. They're entrepreneurs. They're not just lawyers or they're not just whatever, whatever. They are entrepreneurs or they've got entrepreneurs back in them right now. So, friends, in life we have left the past decades. We've gone from your typical political dirty politics, politics and we've gone to entrepreneurial politics. Why? 
because it's taken the elite. Elite are really stupid. They just hire other people to do the dirty work for them. They are. They really are stupid. They're narcissists. They're evil and they're dumbasses. They just hire people like you and me, right? That's why. Did you know, friends, that the governments look for high um, IQ kids from primary schools? They pay their schools, their colleges and all that. And they grab them and they take them in the military. And the parents say, well, at least my kids have got a high bang job. They have, they've brainwashed these kids from young to implement all this shit that is happening upon us. That's what happens. Entrepreneurs are strategic. They know about strategy. Remember, I'm a strategic healer. Right? I've got to blow my horn somehow. Right? They are strategic entrepreneurs. They know how to do something why and when see the elite strategic entrepreneurs they know how to do what and when and what the fuck are we doing we're roaming the streets like lost dogs having cops and horses up our asses how strategic is that seriously friends seriously now so we have not now shifted to entrepreneurial politics the new breed of politicians have shaped a Congress, because this is American-based, right? An institution that encourages entrepreneurial activity and large personal enterprises. And this is from the University of, Canvas, of Kansas. On Capitol Hill, individualism is rampant. There are now 535 political parties in Congress the same number as members and they are all individuals because they're all working as individual businesses for themselves they don't give a shit about the community and this is exactly what's been happening in australia all political parties i don't care if it's the informed medical options party i don't care if it's the bosses i don't care if it's the nationals labor liberal animal justice they are all individual entrepreneurial businesses who are just looking out for themselves and working together globally because you can't start a political party unless you are an elite and you're one of them do you get that friends you can't oh you can start it but you're not going to get anywhere right you're not going to get anywhere now and i was listening to the radio earlier and something very very important they said and i made a note of what they were saying and i've bloody lost the notes it was so important for me to tell you what it is that they said on Sky News. They said something. Here we go. I was listening to Sky News Radio in Australia because there's also Sky News America and UK. And I don't know who it was that was speaking. There was someone that was speaking from um, Australian or Victorian government. Right? And look at what they said, friends. Look at what they said. They said, the universe does not grant reruns. You know, with what's happening now, the bullshit bug and, and all that that's happening. The universe does not grant reruns. And I think, fuck, I wish a lot of you listened to the bloody radio or TV or whatever to listen and to see that they are saying and manifesting, because it's the topic of the chat today, they are manifesting what they want by saying these things. So they're planting in people's heads saying the universe, whether it's a galactic generation, uh, federation, whether it's the, whether it's your God, whether it's your Jesus, Allah, I don't give a shit who you believe in up there, right? Saying that the universe will not grant you a rerun and a rerun means a second chance. Well, that is wrong. The universe does grant reruns. It has granted reruns for thousands of years. Meaning that we have second chances and second chances and second chances, but we're going to hurt in the meantime. And we have to try and get it right now. We have to try and get our life right now. Just like you're in an abusive relationship, you're going to give the, the bastard, right? If it's a man. Second chance, third, fourth, fifth. I mean, how many chances are you going to fucking get him to bash the shit out of you before you say, fuck off, I'm out of here? Right? So the universe keeps giving you chances because we've got the free will. But these assholes now are trying to manifest because i've written it down in my writing so i've got it here trying to manifest and say to you that there are no reruns there are reruns we can get out of this situation friends we need to ask for help 
from the higher, high vibration spiritual beings to help us. And we need to gather that strength within us to do that and to believe in it. Because if you don't start believing in yourselves and if we don't start believing that we can change things in life, we're not going to change anything. Just like if you're if you're building a house, you don't just get your architect to draw the plans and get your permits and this and that. You believe and you've got it drawn down. You've actually got the picture of the house and you're saying, I'm going to draw, uh, this house is going to be built here because you believe in it. And you're making plans in it. Well, if we need to change the life that we're living now, we need to start writing down the plans that we want for ourselves and for life. And we need to start to manifest it. Because no one is manifesting any solutions out there in Australia. No one is manifesting anything. It's all these bullshit videos that a lot of you are watching and that, that's going on out there. And it's manifesting all this fear, negativity, and it's manifesting... It's manifesting the entrepreneurial, strategic, globalized elite plans. Because we have zero plans. Zero plans. So if you can take anything from this, start manifesting something for yourself. Stop watching all that bullshit, right? Because it hasn't gotten you anywhere. And let's start manifesting what we can to change this life. Because I believe it can happen. I believe. And I'm not I'm not on dope. I'm not on any drugs. I don't smoke, drink, do any shit. I truly believe we can change it. I really believe we can change it. But if we don't start writing down plans and start working together and thinking t together and asking for help, just like these assholes are asking for help from their negative entities, and you know exactly who I'm talking about. You know exactly if you know about the um, Area 51 and all this shit, right? They're all ask they've all gotten help from all these assholes. Well, we need to get asshole. Oh, we need to get help. Sorry, from our friends. Of love, of love, and of high vibrations. We need to start asking help from our high vibration beings. That's the only way we can do it. It's the only way we can do it. We've got to change our life on the 3D where we are here on earth. Because that's where we are, friends. That's where we are. Right? We need to start changing our life here and being more fair, empathic, and loving towards ourselves towards people around us who deserve to be cared for, right? Who deserve to be cared for and loved. Towards all animals, towards all nature, because animals and nature have done nothing against us. And yet these assholes are treating us as slaves, are treating other humans as slaves, our fellow humans as slaves. And we have supported them all by buying all their fucking phones, furniture, houses, materials and everything. We have supported the slave planet. So do, why are we abusing animals in nature when they are giving us carbon dioxide, they're giving us love? I mean, you just look at flowers and you smile. You just look at animals and we smile. They're putting love in our hearts and smiles on our faces and we're screwing them and exploiting and eating them and we're supporting the evil black elite. And you're wondering why we are here? Because we have supported the evil. We've supported the evil. So if we start to twist our brain the way we think and start loving and respecting animals and nature and ourselves and our souls and anyone who's around us who's got a black soul, who's a narcissist, an abuser and an asshole, tell them to fuck off. Because we don't want evil people and every single family has got negative energies. Keep away from them. Keep away from them. If they're really, really bad, right, I'm saying, right? Because we've all got negative energies around us. But I'm saying if they're abusers and assholes and narcissists, tell them to fuck off. They can go on this side. We're on this side. Well, not even on this side with these assholes here. We're on option number three, right, which is about love and empathy. We're in option number three. So you choose whose side you want to be on. Do you want to be on the elites? Do you want to be on the fake freedom bullshit who are the same shit as this? They're all the same. Or do you want to be in love and empathy? And get over yourselves and stop eating animals and stop eating all the fish that have got the microchip shit in them and the mercury. Stop eating anyone with a soul because if you want to have a soul where well, you can't eat another soul and start respecting nature and looking at flowers and talking, and talking to nature and thanking nature for the fucking oxygen, the oxygen that we get from nature. Because we breathe in oxygen from nature, we breathe out carbon dioxide that nature has. So how do you want to live? Anyway, friends, 
thanks for listening to my rant i've got a lot of work to do now with the parent children i've got jada on here on my who always sits on my on my leg here. i'll try and lift my leg up so you can see, see can you see her she's sitting up there so it's all right jada i'm just here my miss here so friends if you need any healing you need any counseling whatever just contact me just let me know i'm really behind in my messages just keep persisting and keep asking me paris paris are you there are you there there right okay i need a work too i'm here to help i help a lot of people I help a lot of people as clients. I help a lot of people for free. So don't think that I'm just, I mean, I don't even have to say it. You know, I'm not in it for money. I've helped a lot of people and I still do. Right? Respect me. I respect you. And um, whose side are you on? It's got to be love and empathy. It's got to be love and empathy. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. I've still got my tea here. I've got to put some hot water in it. Right? Love you all. Have a great day. Not all, just the good people. Have a great day. Think about what I've said. Think about what others say. Think about where you want to be. Okay, have a fabulous Tuesday. I think it's a Monday night in other places. Wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Love and empathy. It's going to get us out of this fucking shit. Okay, see you everyone. Bye. No, say goodbye to everyone, Jada.